Hello, I want to give you a quick introduction to the material system and some extra resources that I think may be useful for all the users, but all these with the beginners in mind. Okay, uh, this is Studio, this is the material editor, this is the material list. Um, the first thing you have to take into account with Maxwell is that uh, Maxwell only has one shader that simulates all the matter in the world virtually. Um, okay, th this is the heart of the Maxwell uh, shader. Um, as at the beginning, it may seem to be a little bit overwhelming or um, familiar. Maxwell also offers some material systems that uh, help creating uh, the most common materials very quickly. Um, in order to access them, you only have to right click on, in the materials list, or you can also change any material into the different assistants from here. Um, let's do it from here. For example, um, let's create this opaque material. Uh, this is very useful. It can be uh, used for plastics, uh, wood, varnish wood, uh, many different opaque objects. Uh, it's very easy. Uh, as you can see, it only has these parameters. Let me activate the auto refresh. And for example, you can just change the color. Uh, you can map all these options. Uh, whenever you find this uh, checker icon, um, you can increase or decrease the shininess and the roughness to make it more polished or more rough material or rather like. And you can add a to your code for that too. That will add this subtle. Uh, shine um, okay um, it's important to to notice that all these assistants actually work with the same shader we have here under under the hood so um, it's a good resource also to learn how these materials are built uh, to compare them to the advanced uh, material type so, for example, if I move this to advanced, I convert it to advanced, uh, you can see it has created a couple of layers with a couple of uh, BSDFs there with different options. We'll go through them later. Okay, uh, what else we have? Uh, we have, for example, the emitting uh, material, which basically just adds a material with an emitter component. Um, we also have uh, the transparent uh, assistant. This helps to create glass, um, different types of glass with different options. Um, water, for example. Um, you also have uh, the metal assistant. Um, it helps, uh, it has some, pre some presets here for shiny aluminium, uh, gold, um, brass aluminium, um, and it shows many different possibilities. You can also create perforations with a, a texture. Um, you also have the translucent material for subsurface scattering uh, materials such as, um, for example, silicon or honey or orange juice, um, many different options. Um, you also have the car paint material, um, also with very few options, but it helps um, creating those usually difficult uh, shaders for uh, the, the car paint. Um, also, this AGS uh, 
it's interesting. It's it's very useful. It's it, it may be a um, replacement for for a transparent material, but it renders much much faster. Um, it's basically a, a reflection layer with the opacity lower down. So um, the trick of this is it doesn't uh, produce refractions, which speeds up uh, a lot to your renders. Um, so this will work nicely in frame windows uh, and will speed up your renders a lot. So it's very interesting to have. And you also have some uh, other assistants one for hair, uh, for substance painter or designer materials. This help you to easily convert all your substance work into Maxwell materials very quickly and some other uh, scan uh, material steps. Okay, um, let's see this one for example. Let's, let's say I convert this uh, to a custom material. Let's get a little, uh, a, an overview of how the, mater the material system works. Okay, um, let's explain a little bit this VSDF, what we call the VSDF. This first part um, refers to the main nature of the material. It actually represents this. Uh, well, this is the material itself, and this is the light hitting on the surface of the material. Okay, this reflectance 0 and reflectance 90 uh, parameters represent the light that bounces off the material. So it can be taken a little bit as the color of, the, of that material. Um, the reflectance 0 represents the color in the fr frontal angles and the reflectance 90 represents the color in the slanted angles. Um, and then we have uh, the transmittance, which is the light that goes through the material. So uh, that means that it, if this is black, the material will be opaque. And if it has some color, it will be transparent. Um, and then we have some parameters like the index of refraction and this attenuation distance that represents the, how the light is absorbed through the material when it travels through the material. Um, okay, these are the main uh, aspects of, the, of this part. Then the, the second section here represents the surface of the material, the finishing of this, of this material. So here we have parameters such as roughness, uh, the bump, or you can also load uh, normal maps here, uh, the anisotropy and the angle of that anisotropy. And this lower section represents the light that scatters inside the, inside the material. So uh, this controls the subsurface scattering properties. Okay, as, as you can see, we have some uh, icons here uh, that um, represent the different components the material can have. We first have layers and, and this helps, for example, stacking one material on top of the other, for example. Let, let me add a new layer here. As you can see, it has occluded the, the layer below, which is the represents the metal. Um, okay, in this case, we can, for example, load here uh, a map, load a, for example, this checker map, and now you will be able to see in the black areas, you will be able to see the metal which is below, while in the white areas we are seeing a grey material, for example, if we make it red, we'll see it there. Okay, let's change the preview scene so we can better see what's happening there. Okay. So this is the um, layer on top and this is the metal below. 
Okay. Um, this happens because this blending mode is normal, which means the layer on top occludes what's beneath. Uh, even if it's a transparent material, for example, it occludes what's beneath. Uh, but if we change this to additive, uh, the um, material will be added to the, to the material below, so it won't be occluding it, but it will be adding more information to that material. So here we have the red uh, material on top of the metal, which is actually adding uh, that red to the surface. Okay, this helps you to stack things one on top of the other, for example, scratches or things like that, uh, scratches on, on, on paint, for example. Okay, what else we can have? This emitting component is the same way uh, in this case, in the, in the case of this material, but this emitter component. Let's see what happens here. If I add this emitter component to this layer on top. So in this case, we are making the top layer an emitting object. So if I increase this, it would be emitting more light. And if I turn it off, we will see the material which is next to the emitter component. Okay, let's delete this one. Uh, we can also have displacement. You only can have, can have one of these components. And we also have uh, coatings, which represents like a, a very thin um, a film coat that uh, can give you this iridescent uh, look oh, you can find, for example, in typical the, the soap bubbles or the oil in the, in the road. Um, okay, what else can be useful uh, for you? For example, this uh, resources browser, also for the beginning, uh, will help you um, adding materials to the scene. Maxwell in the, in the Maxwell installation folder uh, includes just, uh, just a few, uh, includes some textures, uh, includes some uh, HDR files that you can uh, use for the environment. It includes some IS files too, to create your IS uh, lights. Um, and some extra uh, things that may, come, may be useful too, like um, what well, these IR files, but this is a bit advanced. But um, this, this can be a, a useful tool, for example, uh, to add objects and textures to the, to the scene, for example. Uh, if I click here, this texture list, this group shows all the textures used in the, in the scene. So I can, for example, just uh, drag some textures to the, to the scene to use them later, like this. Or I can drag just some skies to test, quickly test with them later, for example, like this. So um, let's see, let's, for example, Click on the environment, uh, change from sky to image face, and just drag some skies there. You can see it shows in scene, or you can change it with a different one. Or you can also drag uh, the textures to the to the materials like this. It, this can be very useful. Also, this is very useful for the 
for the beginners the online resource gallery uh, this is very helpful in this case i have checked the architectural materials but i can also add a white filter for example if i can if i want to wanted to show only the white materials and uh, refer to architecture so for example i can select this one let's download this one for example and it's quickly imported to the scene and ready to be used on on any object okay um what else can be useful for example this um library uh it comes with a collection of uh ready-made objects primitives some ready-made lights because in the case of maxwell the lights um are made with materials with a meter component of the materials um, but you can have many different types of lights for example you can have area lights you can have is spots projectors hdr uh, emitters and in order to um, save you the, the time to create an object create the material and apply to the to the object um, these are are already made and you can just drag them to the scene and use them um, you can have for example these field lights from is files um, is lights uh, ring lights uh, projectors any different things uh, we have here uh, you can also drag some uh, objects to the scene that help you uh, to quickly create some scenery you have some light setups uh, maybe also helpful for the beginners or to quickly create a, a illumination setup and also uh, one last thing um, is that you can create your own uh, libraries with Maxwell objects uh, for example in, in this case I have just pointed this uh, new library that you can create like this and just select a folder where you have some MXS files which are the Maxwell scene files uh, it will show all, all of them here uh, all, all the MXS files you can find so you can easily drag a tree or or whatever to the scene uh, very quickly um, um, you also can check some scenes here uh, there are some demo scenes we include in the Maxon installation folder so I hope this was helpful bye bye